we have with us the Honorable President of India, Shri Pranab Mukherjee. Shubham Karoti Kalyanam, Arugyam Dhan Sampada, Shatru Buddhi Vinashai, Dvipam Jyoti Namostate. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We at ASSOCHEM are delighted to have the gracious presence of the Honorable President of India, Shri Pranam Mukherjee. My colleagues on the dais, past presidents of ASSOCHEM, excellencies, ambassadors, diplomats, industry leaders, senior members from the media, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome you to, to this prestigious ASSOCHEM Summit on Livelihood Security of India. We are very grateful that the Honorable President, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, for his uh, gracious presence. Our Honorable President has brought together key st stakeholders across the political spectrum and the Indian uh, public and has always inspired confidence and conviction in our people by virtue of his unparalleled excellence in governance and inclusive growth strategies. Sir, with your fine mentorship and able guidance, I truly believe our nation will benefit considerably in actualizing the transformational vision of achieving livelihood security for all citizens of India. Here is a memorable moment for you, sir. Honorable President of India, Shri Pandam Mukherjee, Honorable Governor of Madhya Pradesh, Shri Yadavji, who's with us today here, Shri Rana Kapoor, Shri Jajodhya, Mr. Dawat, Your Excellencies, past presidents of ASACHAM, dignitaries from the government, members from the press and the media, ladies and gentlemen. ASACHAM is sure that the government will help in it in realizing its vision. ASACHAM has great faith in the cooperation. Our mission is that there should be faster growth, more dispersed growth across our country, and more equitable growth covering all sections of our diverse society. With all your blessings and cooperation, ASSOCHEM hopes to realize this dream, this shared dream soon. Thank you very much. Good morning, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Sri Ramnaresh Chadav, Governor, Madhya Pradesh. Sri Rana Kapoor, President Ashachem. Sri Sunil Kanuria, Senior Vice President Ashachem. Shandeep Jajudia, Vice President Ashachem. Sir D. S. Rawat, Secretary General Ashachem. Past Presidents of Ashachem. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed happy to be here to inaugurate the summit on livelihood security, realizing the vision for 1.3 billion Indians, and receive the first copy of the report on this subject released a while ago. To begin with, let me compliment ASSOCHAM, one of the frontier industry associations of our country, for organizing this conference on an issue touching a wide spectrum of our society. There is a compelling need to provide livelihood security to those in the lower rung of the socioeconomic ladder. Additionally, there is a binding obligation to realize the dreams of the, dreams of the aspirations 
uh, aspirational generations of young Indians. All these who in India with 2.4% of world's geographical area has 17% of world population pose formidable challenges. At this meet, I hope, an honest appraisal of issues concerning livelihood, security, and expect solutions that will guide policymakers. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, livelihood is a fundamental ingredient for decent human existence. Without this important prerequisite, people suffer denial of access from the common amenities of life, food, shelter, education, and health care become restrictive to someone without a stable livelihood. Therefore, any policy in the socio-economic domain has livelihood provision at its core, whether or not it espouses such on objective explicity. Lack of livelihood opportunities manifests itself in several forms of deprivation, most glaringly poverty. In India, the high incidence of poverty, over 60 percent, that prevailed six decades ago, have come down to below 30 percent now. About 85 million people come out of poverty line during the period 2019 to 2011 12. Even then, a sizable number of about 270 million remain below the poverty line as of 2011-12. Our goal now is poverty elimination, not merely poverty alleviation. The poor has to be the first claimants and hence the focal point of development activity to wipe out the curse of poverty, the most potent tool is job creation. Policies and programs aimed at generating employment have to concentrate on the specific needs of this vulnerable segment. In 2005, we made right to employment a legal enactment which gives us teeth in our fight against poverty. The bulk of poor in India, nearly about four-fifth, reside in rural areas. Livelihood security for the rural population, therefore, has to receive strong impetus. Agriculture, which is the backbone of India's economy, is a crucial sector for the rural economy as well. A sound agricultural system is indispensable for attaining a host of objectives like poverty eradication, food adequacy, nutritional security, expansions in rural employment, and higher rural incomes. The occupational security for an incredibly large number of rural households hinges on agriculture. There are millions of farmers tilling on small and marginal holdings our focus has to be on innovations for low-cost technologies, machine and tools to transform subsistence farming into a viable and rewarding profession. Our challenge has to be in reaching out to the last farmland and equipping them with the best practices in cultivation. Our efforts have to be directed at raising the low level of farm productivity in order to enhance farmer remuneration. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a large rural population exerts load on the farming sector for employment. This has resulted in underemployment in agriculture and even disguised 
and <coughs> employment. A situation of more people being engaged, that what is required. To lift the pressure off from the farm sector, more jobs in the non-farm sector are required to be created through a paradigm shift from primary to secondary agriculture. The food processing sector provides a window linking industry with agriculture and generating jobs in the rural areas and small townships. Developing this sunrise sector calls for greater investment in infrastructure like cold chains, handling, packaging, and transportation. The government has recently launched measures aimed at emancipation of the poor and the neglected. Under the Sangshad Others Gram Yojana, villages will be adopted for provisions of improved basic amenities and greater access to rights and entitlements. They will be converted into model villages for replication elsewhere. The Digital India program envisages widespread availability of infrastructure to make our country a digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. Similarly, the financial inclusion program will cover all habitations and banking facilities and provide all households bank accounts, rupee cards, financial literacy, micro-insurance, and unorganized sector pension. I am confident that these determined efforts will lead to an outpouring of the socio-economic benefits, including greater livelihood opportunities. Distinguished guests, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, India's demographic dynamism will position us as the largest supplier of the workforce in the world in another decade. By 2021, the proportion of working age population is expected to be 64 percent. We have the largest young population in the world. By 2020, the average age of an Indian will be 29 years eight years younger than an American or a Chinese. Not only do we have to find gainful employment to engage our growing manpower, we also have to equip them with capacity and expertise to make this impending demographic dividend count. A skilled working population at par with the best in the world can reap dividends like none other. A multimodal approach is necessary. The manufacturing sector has to be invigorated as the potential of this sector as a mass employment generator is immense. I have great hopes that the investor-friendly initiative of Make in India will lead our economy to be a manufacturing hub of low cost but high quality products. Job creation and capacity building has to be complemented one another. Skill development on a massive scale, SA 500 million persons by 2022, as envisaged by the National Policy on Skill Development is required. The onus is on National Skill Development Corporation and other agencies to impact skills, maintaining requisite standards, and make available the targeted number of the skilled personnel. Generating interest among youth to acquire new skills or upgrade existing skills call for <coughs> monetary incentives. Ladies and gentlemen, a freeze in the fresh farm loans helps owing to overemployment and increasing inability of the non-farm sector in the rural areas to absorb the excess rural workers have led to the teeming of the manpower in urban areas. Employment generation in the urban sector posits a tough challenge in a 
<coughs> scenario of the skill gap and urban poverty, to enable the urban poor to manage the external environment and access resources, financial cooperative structures have to be promoted. The National Urban Livelihood Mission is playing a crucial role in unleashing the capabilities of the poor to generate sustainable livelihood. Livelihood security is incomplete without provision of social security. In India, over 85 percent of the working population or an estimated 400 million people work in the unorganized sector. Schemes like Shwabalamban, which deals with unorganized sector pension, have to fully cover the unorganized sector workforce for a significant impact on livelihood <coughs> protection. To make a decisive change in the livelihood security of Indian, the challenges are many and time limited. But I'm certain that the combined efforts of all stakeholders, government, industry, non-governmental agencies, and the community at large, we will be able to extend to our <coughs> countrymen enormous livelihood prospect. The industry can create mechanism for income opportunities and capacity building under CSR initiatives mandated by the Companies Act of 2013. I hope that this summit will discuss issues set bare, make recommendations in the right perspective. I once again commend Asocham for convening this event. Let me conclude in the words of Mahatma Gandhi, I quote, happiness depends on what you can give, not what you can get. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind.